Okay, I've got this block and I'm ready to fuse, things, fuse some things down and I've actually already fused down the head of the cat here just because I didn't want those little pieces to be moving out of the way while I was working on the mouse and the mouse is the point of this video. But I'm going to do two different mice on this block because I want to show you a couple of different possibilities. So when I first designed this little mouse, it was for the Noisy Farm quilt, and I just wanted this mouse to be popping in to different blocks, and I wanted him to be able to pop in from any side. And this is an opportunity for me to remind you that when you're laying out your pieces in a block, you want to think of this as a photograph. And there are edges to the photograph that get cropped off. So you don't want your pieces to be floating. You don't want to center them in the block. You want to anchor them down at the bottom of the block so that that cut edge gets hidden in the seam and it looks like just a portrait, like this little cat is having his picture taken and that's why he's chopped off at the neck. If you have this centered in there and that chopped off part just floating in the middle of the block, then he just looks like a decapitated cat. If you want to center your faces in the block, leave the necks off and just center the faces and then it just looks like a little graphic design. So I knew that I cut this block a little bit on the big side, so I measured actually, and this is actually 10 and a half inches. I know that I'm going to trim this block down to 10 and a half inches. So I have this mouse who's kind of photobombing the shot coming in from the top corner. So I'm going to line up his body where the edge, the cut edge of the block is going to be. So the mouse is pretty easy to assemble. You lay the body down, you lay the belly down, and then you tuck these ears underneath the head. So you just slide those in and then you fuse it down. All right, so he's fused down. The cat head is fused down, but I decided to do something a little extra for this video because if you guys are bringing these mice into other blocks, you might want to have them actually peeking out from behind other animals. And I wanted to show you how you can do that. So I thought it'd be cute to have this extra little mouse peeking out like he's hiding behind this cat and he's popping into the picture. I mean, if he could put bunny ears up behind him, he totally would. So I laid him out kind of at the angle that I wanted and then I chopped off the bottom of his body a little bit in from the neck because I, want, I don't want to have a big square ridge. Sometimes you can see a little bit through the fabric, especially if it's a solid and especially if it's a light color. I don't know that you'd really be able to see through this print very well, but just in case, I'm going to get rid of that part. And now I'm going to tuck what's left of his body, see if I can do this one-handed while I hold this video camera. I'm going to tuck that edge of his body whoops, underneath the edge of the neck. So now let me lift this up and see if I tucked it too deep. I may have tucked it too deeply. Yeah, that's pretty deep. So I'm going to pull him out just a little bit. And I also want him a little closer to the bottom. All right, so let me check that again. Whoops, now I just moved his belly. Let me try to do too many things. I've got too many different angles to set this up on a tripod, so I'm trying to hold it here with one hand. So I think that was like that. And I've got body down. So let's try that. That seems better. So let's try this one more time. Yeah, that's more like an eighth to a quarter of an inch overlap. So I'm going to lay that down. And now, since I'm trying to do this one-handed, normally I would do this all in one step. But I'm actually going to fuse down just the neck and the bottom part of that mouse. I'm definitely leaving the top part unfused because I still need to stick his ears behind his head. So I don't think I fused that for a full 10 seconds, but it's just enough to tack it in place so nothing goes shifting around. So now I've got two ears and I'm going to tuck one on each side of his head and I'm going to tuck them behind. Remember you always tuck smaller pieces behind bigger pieces or narrower pieces behind wider pieces. So the base of that ear is narrower than the mouse body, and so the ear goes behind the body. In the case of the cat, the neck is narrower than the whole muzzle piece, so the neck goes behind. The back of the base of the head is also narrower than that muzzle piece, so it goes behind. 
The ears are narrower than the head, so they go behind the head. So that's just a good rule of thumb about what goes behind what, and that way you get nice clean edges. You don't want to try and, I've seen some people sometimes try and butt the edges up like that. That doesn't work very well, and um, I also don't design them that way. I design them with a little bit of extra to tuck behind, so if things could start getting a little bit weird if you do that. So that looks good. Now I've got the ears in place, and I'm going to fuse that. And this time I'm going to wait for a full 10 seconds, I think. All right, now I've got two mice photobombing this poor cat. I've got one down here coming out from behind his body and one up there. And now there's just one thing left to do for this block, and that is outline all of the pieces. I'm going to do that in a separate video as well. I'll go ahead and do the cat and one of the mice, and then I'll come back and show you because I know a lot of people are unhappy about the tiny, tiny features on that mouse but you can do all of that stitching by machine. You can do it by hand if you like, and I love hand stitching, so I'm not gonna talk you out of that, but you can do all of that by machine, and that's what I'm gonna show you in the last video.